Thank you for joining us to talk about swimming 101 and how we can incorporate it into our fitness routine. I'm going to put in the chat box a sign in for you to get your healthy lifestyles points. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, throw them in the chat box and we can relay them over to Laura. But I'll turn the time over to you, Laura, to introduce yourself and what you do for St. Mark's Hospital. All right, well, thank you for having me. Um, thank you again for the opportunity. I love um, sharing um, wellness um, and prevention. That's kind of what I'm all about. Um, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for over 30 years. Um, and most of my experience is, was emergency medicine. And, and a lot of what I've done in nursing was treating disease. And I'm a huge advocate of uh, prevention. Uh, rather than treatment of disease. Obviously, we have to treat disease, uh, but uh, if we do a little bit of prevention, it goes a long way. So um, I'm pretty passionate about um, nutrition and um, physical activity. So that's just, this is just one of those examples. I do have a national certification in education. I've been teaching uh, for about 12 years, not full time. I've been full time for about uh, five years and uh, also have a national certification in professional development. Um, this really presentation is based off of um, my own experience with swimming. Um, I learned to swim as an adult and uh, and the pain that I went through to try to kind of learn that. Um, hopefully I can alleviate some of that for you uh, by giving you some guidelines. And also this presentation is based off of the latest in um, research in athletic training and sports medicine as well. So there's my disclaimer that it's not in, it's intended for educational purposes only. It doesn't replace, um, uh, you know, uh, an evaluation by your physician or a sports medicine uh, specialist, and I don't have any conflict of interest. We're going to talk about why swimming. Why would you want to do that? It's appeal. Uh, we'll talk about different swimming environments, um, the basics of mechanics and the technique, and then we'll review some resources and some tips. So, why do people learn to swim? Um, these are some of the reasons why they would uh, really to provide a new challenge, or maybe it's on their bucket list. Uh, perhaps it's a family activity or they want to socialize um, something uh, physical that involves socialization. Uh, there, they could be involved in other water activities. Maybe they're recovering from an injury. It's a physician referral. A lot of times this is a, uh, it is easy on the joints. So, you know, you had a knee replacement or, or you're having um, issues with your elbow or your ankle. Uh, many times physicians will ask you to swim because it's so easy on the joints. So that could be a reason. Um, maybe you're wanting to participate in a triathlon. Um, for me, that's what got me swimming is I'd been doing a lot of running. I'd been doing a lot of biking and I wanted to start participating in triathlons, but I didn't know how to swim. And so I had to kind of teach myself to be able to do that. Um, it could be for fitness or weight loss, um, and many people never learned as a child, um, not unlike myself. And so, um, getting over fear of fear of water or just learning to to swim um, altogether would be some good reasons why many people swim. There's some barriers about why maybe people wouldn't want to learn, um, and many of them are just fear of because they don't have the skills or maybe they took, you know, knew how to swim when they were a child, but they've taken a big break. They have a fear of water. Uh, maybe their facilities isn't close by or the facility that is close by um, isn't um, a high quality facility or um, many people don't like going to crowded or busy pools. Um, it's too much, um, too many people. Uh, but I think most of the biggest barriers in regards to not wanting to swim is that whole intimidation. Um, unsure about the pool etiquette, it's something that you don't know. Um, 
swimming is really hidden. It's unlike, you know, many of the other exercises that you see people outside um, doing. Unless you hang by a pool, it's really not something that's out there. Um, and many people, um, when they start swimming, are surprised at how popular it is. Uh, so it's really just easy to dismiss, um, easy to think that it's not for you. Uh, the other biggest barrier is um, it can be a little bit of a hassle to get into the routine of swimming. You have to not only get, get dressed, but then you have to shower, and then you get into the water, and then you have to shower afterwards. And so for some people, that is just too complex or too much of a hassle. Um, and so compared with other exercises, it does kind of have a little bit of a time element. You can't just um, jump in um, literally and get started. It, there is some preparation in regards to swimming. Um, some swimming myths um, is that swimming is only for serious swimmers. I don't swim. Why? That's not something you have to learn when you're young. You have to have lots of practice and it really is not true. Uh, swimming is for all levels um, and the local um, municipal pools try to make it open for everyone and have lanes that are open for all levels. Um, another myth is that it's something that can be done only by yourself, which can be true. Um, and that's why I really like it, but it can also be something social. You can join a club or you can go with um, a buddy and share a lane. Um, and, and so it can definitely be a social activity as well. One of the, another myth is that it's less of a workout, which there is nothing further than from the truth. Um, it is very low impact. And so people don't feel like they're working out but it actually is one of the only ones that will, is not only a cardiovascular uh, um, exercise, but also a strength exercise at the same time. Because water is so dense and you're having to overcome that resistance, you actually are doing it simultaneously. So it is awesome whole body exercise. Um, you just don't feel like you're having to work really hard. And so that's kind of where that myth comes from. And then the last one is that it's not a progressive fitness activity and you, can, you really can always improve. Um, I've been swimming for many years and I still work on my technique and I'm still slowly getting faster or, um, you know, improving that. So it definitely is progressive. So now that um, we've kind of talked about the misconceptions of swimming, let's kind of, uh, I'm gonna share why swimming is so special. This is, a, this is a quote by Lynn Shear, who's a news journalist. And I really liked this quote because I, I thought it really kind of incorporated everything um, that swimming is to me. Um, and so the quote is, swimming stretches my body beyond its earthly limits. It helps to soothe every ache and caress every muscle, but it's also an inward journey, a time of quiet when encased is an element that once was hostile and but now is familiar. I find myself at peace. And so really that's what um, swimming is to me and for many people what it is to them as well. Um, swimming is my one of my favorite exercises. I only have two top ones, um, and swimming is one of those. And it's because it's so relaxing, so to speak. So you really are working your body and um, improving your cardiovascular and your strength, and yet it's relaxing. You can't really say that same for many, many exercises. Swimming is immersive. It's almost like reading a book. You know, when you read a book, you start reading and um, you get involved in the story and you have no idea what's happening around you. And so that's really what, what swimming is. It's similar to you're alone in your thoughts, your mind starts to wander, there's no phone, there's no emails, sounds are muff muffled. It's complete sensory detox. Um, the really, the world's problems can be washed away. It's, it's been described as um, an escape, as peaceful, freedom. Um, authors and entrepreneurs have described it as 
that they're uh, that they get new ideas when they're swimming, that their creativity um, is increased, and all of the uh, research shows that um, that really you improve your well-being and joy um, just by um, participating in swimming. Uh, for example, like 30 minutes, three times a week. So there's lots of benefits of swimming. Um, and the general benefits is that, like I mentioned before, it really improves your well being and helps you maintain a positive attitude. And also, the research um, shows that it improves your mental health significantly. So if you're stressed out, um, your job is driving you crazy, your kids are, you know, driving you nuts, you want to scream, you just need to get away. Um, swimming really um, will provide a reduction in stress levels, a reduction in anxiety and depression. Um, swimmers really are more satisfied with life. They're happier. They feel like life is more worthwhile and it makes you very confident. Um, and part of the other thing is that swimming, I mentioned, you get the exercise without the sweat. Um, it supports the body. Um, one of the things that I did um, when I was pregnant, I have um, twin, I have twin boy girl. And when I was pregnant with them, unlike my other pregnancy, I was carrying a significant amount of weight. And so I would literally swim every single day because it was the only relief that I got from that stress on my back. Um, it really supports the body's the body weight. It's non-weight bearing. It doesn't have any strain. You're unshackled by gravity. Um, and so it's ideal um, for those that have maybe chronic illnesses or injuries. Um, those that maybe have difficulty exercising on land, it's too hard on their joints. Um, and it's also really highly advantageous as we get older um, by, you know, putting that strength into it. And um, the exercising without the sweat is is perfect for me. My two favorite exercises are biking and swimming, and it's because you never you never feel like you're working really hard. Um, the water is constantly cooling you down. Um, for biking, it's the, the wind typically that's constantly cooling you down, but for swimming, um, the water is so cool and just feels uh, amazing. Swimming can boost your life expectancy. Um, this swimming is actually uh, being um, pushed significantly in Great Britain, and they have um, have like a national um, push for becoming physically active. And right now, I mean, the, the U.S. kind of does that as well, but they're pushing more like walking where Great Britain does swimming. Um, and so there's quite a bit of research in regards to Great Britain and the impact that it's had um, on their uh, population. Um, swimmers live longer. Uh, they have half, half the risk of death compared to inactive people. Um, the there was several studies that talked about how much younger you feel um, swimmers compared to others and they had calculated that um, swimmers who swim three times a week 30 minutes at a time um, have the feel 12 years younger on average it also lowers the incidence of cardiovascular disease stroke and diabetes up to 41 percent which is just huge and has a huge positive impact on cancer, pulmonary disease, obesity, and cerebral palsy as well. Swimming um, improves your muscle strength and power. It makes you balanced. It develops your core, um, both abdomen and back muscles. And so it's great for those that have lower back pain. Um, it improves your functional ability because you are trying to do so many things at once. So you kind of are trying to position your body perfectly. You're trying to, um, you're trying to move your arms. You're trying to move your legs, and because you're working on that coordination of your muscles, it actually helps you function um, physically better. Um, 
And also it can reduce uh, the use of drugs if you have low back pain or for those that are in rehabilitation. In fact, I mentioned um, Great Britain, they had a study that said that they, their national government saved 357 million pounds um, by, um, by increasing the people that were swimming in their nation, which equates to like $500 million in US money um, that it drove down their healthcare costs. I mentioned that swimming is a full body workout. And so this is a table that kind of shows you the different types of swimming and how many calories you could expect to burn based off of your um, weight. Uh, Again, it uses all the muscles in the body, water being denser than air, the effort to overcome that resistance um, makes your body work harder and provides all over body toning. Um, really 30 minutes in a pool is worth 45 minutes of, an, an, of another activity because of that water resistance. So it's really a great way to burn cal calories. Um, and the, the highest benefits are pretty typical. Everyone is kind of saying 30 minutes, three times a week is what's going to, um, is going to be an adequate amount um, of swimming to um, get all of these benefits. All right, let's kind of talk about the basics. Um, first off is your equipment. What would you expect that you need to get? to be able to jump into swimming. It's actually a very relatively um, uh, cheap activity. Um, if you have, but I mean, you obviously need to have an act, you know, go to a municipal pool or have somewhere to swim, but you just have to have a swimsuit and a towel. I encourage you to use a swimming cap, especially if um, you have longer hair, it reduces what we call drag. Um, and because you're trying to be hydrodynamic, you want to um, not have things that are kind of hanging out. And so your hair kind of flowing would reduce your ability to get farther and be faster. And so that's, um, that's why the benefit of the cap. Um, goggles are an absolute. You can get goggles for five or six dollars. Uh, again, a cap, you know, you can get for a buck or two. Um, pretty cheap when it compares to other um, exercise um, choices. Um, and then really those those goggles will help you know where you are in the lane and will help um, uh, you know protect your eyes from the chemicals as well. You'll need toiletries and hairbrush. Um, you need to shower before and after um, you swim in a pool setting. Um, you don't need flip flops, but if you have um, have concerns about walking barefoot or um, slipping, um, that's definitely um, something you can take. Um, typically, um, unless you keep your belongings poolside and you're not worried about someone taking off with them, um, a lock is always a good idea. Uh, the locker room will have the ability to have locks, lockers, but you just need to provide your own lock. And then I always uh, recommend a water bottle and a snack. Um, your body's working hard. And so normally if you were running or walking or biking or any other kind of physical activity, your, your body's going to um, require water to stay hydrated. And in this instance, it's not uh, different other than for some reason, I, at least myself, I never feel thirsty when I'm swimming even though it's a, it's a strenuous exercise and you're working hard, um, you know, I would kind of drink throughout. So I would, you know, do 10 laps and then I'd take, you know, a two minute break and I would, you know, get my, my breathing back to normal and I would drink and then I would do, go do 10 more laps. And so um, remember to hydrate. Um, you're in water. I almost feel like the, because you're in water, maybe it's, it gives you that false sense that everything's fine, um, but you don't want to get dehydrated, especially if you're doing anything more than 30 minutes. And then I always recommend a snack only because um, municipal pools seem to have um, vending machines around and lots of candy and treats. And so if you have um, a small nutritious snack as you're getting dressed, um, it avoids you from stopping and raiding the, the vending machines.
So these are the five core aquatic skills that you'll need to develop. And, and many of you may have already started swimming, um, but this is something I continue to work on um, and being able to coordinate it. Because again, this is a technical uh, exercise. Uh, so, and you would literally do it in this order. So you need to focus on your body position first. Then you can add your legs, then you can add your arms, then you can um, work on your breathing and then your timing. So if you kind of take baby steps, um, don't get set on perfection. Um, and we'll talk more about each one of these and how to um, be, be more skilled in each one of these um, a little bit later on. As you're learning to swim, um, there are some swim aids that you can utilize to help you um, get better at different portions of swimming. Um, so for example, the floats or kickboards, you may have been to a pool and seen someone using these. That really is to practice um, leg kicks or to practice breathing. And so many times you'll you know, get your arms out in front of you, your body in a horizontal position on the top of the water and you'll practice your kicks as you're, um, you know, moving on in, if you're in a, a good position on the water. So that's kind of what kickboards are. Um, you'll practice your kicks on the side, then you'll kind of practice it with the kickboard. So um, the fins are also in regards to, to um, learning how to kick um, because your, your feet are supposed to kind of be floppy when you're kicking. And so many times people will kick with their knees. And that's not the correct technique. Um, it's actually should come from the hip. So both kickboards and fins will help kind of um, help you learn how to kick. The pool boys um, are placed between the thighs or in between the ankles. And that's really so that you can focus on your upper body, not only your arms, but also your breathing. So it puts you in your, your body in the correct horizontal position so that you can focus on one, one thing at a time. So these are just to kind of help improve your technique. All right, one of the things that is important with swimming is that you get a good pace going. Um, when I was learning to swim, I, I would just swim and swim and swim with my arms just as fast as I could. Um, and then I'd get out of breath and I couldn't have, and I couldn't go very long. I'd go two, two laps and then I was done. And so that's really what pacing is all about, is being able to time um, your arms and your breathing together, slow it down, um, because what gets you further is your stroke length. So you have your stroke rate first. Um, your stroke rate is your number of strokes per minute that your arms go, okay? And then your stroke length is your distance that you actually go per stroke. So you kind of want a good balance between the two um, because when one increases, the other decreases. So most, most athletes that are um, try to uh, achieve a higher velocity with stroke length. So it's not necessarily the rate um, length will actually get you further. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. There are some risks that with swimming, though they're significantly less than other um, sports. As I mentioned, it's very easy on the joints. Um, the statistics show that swimmers really have fewer musculoskeletal problems overall comparatively. Um, but these are three problems that can develop when swimming, and um, we'll talk about how you can kind of mitigate that. The first is um, shoulder impingement, um, and really that's caused by improper upper, using your arms improperly, the improper technique. And when you do that, it places undue stress on your shoulder. And so your uh, rotate, there's a rubbing of your rotator cuff between your humerus and the top or outer edge of your shoulder. And really the treatment for that, if you're having shoulder pain when you're swimming, is that you do that rest, um, stop swimming for a period of time, you put ice on it, um, anti-inflammatories. It can get bad enough that you would need physical therapy or maybe cortisone injections. So it's just really important that you're doing the correct upper arm technique. Um, and 
honestly, the, the recommendations is if you've had like a total shoulder or major surgery in your shoulder, that you are not, that swimming maybe is not for you. Now, I actually had a rotator cuff repair on my shoulder when I was pretty young. Um, and I've never had problems swimming. I'd never have shoulder pain. Um, but my husband had a total replacement. To, um, it just irritates his shoulder too much. So you kind of have to decide um, if you've had shoulder problems, whether it, it works for you. If, you. if you start having shoulder pain when you're swimming, I probably would recommend you doing a different, um, a different exercise. Um, back pain. Now, back pain can happen mostly um, if you are doing a breaststroke or a butterfly technique. Um, if you kind of see in the picture, um, look at how the breaststroke would, how you almost arc the back a little bit. Um, so that would just not be the stroke for you if you've had back pain. But actually, swimming is very good for those that have back pain. Um, about 30% of recreational swimmers have some sort of a back pain injury or degenerative disc disease. And it really is a great exercise because, as I mentioned, it, it improves your core and your back strength. Um, just I would avoid the breaststroke or the butterfly if you have a history of back pain. And then the last thing is knee pain. And again, that's a technique thing. If you are kicking from your knees rather than your hips, um, you can um, inflame the inside of your knee joint. Um, and so that's really an overuse. Just like the back pain, the knee pain um, is increased if you choose breaststroke as your stroke of choice. Um, so I'm a huge advocate of what they call freestyle or the front crawl, uh, which is kind of the traditional swimming that you would normally see most people do. All right, we're going to talk about the different places you can swim. Um, the lap pool, that's the, that's the most typical. Lap pools, most lap pools are 25 meters long. Um, there are some Olympic sized uh, pools, which are 50 meters, but those are rare, few and far between. Um, so when they say that you're doing a lap, what you would normally do is go from one side of the pool to the other side of the pool, and then from that other side back to the beginning, that is one lap. There and back, that is one lap. And if you do one lap, that is 50 meters. And if you actually do 36 laps, that is one mile. So that kind of gives you a guide of, of how far you're going. Um, so many times people will sign up for a triathlon and they have to do a one mile swim. That is 36 laps. So slowly you'll need to increase um, your ability and your, your laps. One of the things, the negative things, I guess, with lap pool is that it's, it's structured, it's chlorinated. Um, there's, they have, you know, rules. Um, you can have indoor or outdoor, heated or unheated, private or municipal. They kind of have different um, parameters. Um, each lane is assigned a specific sp speed. I kind of mentioned that before. You can have slow speed, medium speed, high speed, so uh, or fast. So when you're going and you're, if you're just brand new learning, make sure that you look at the signage and you choose the slow lane rather than jump in um, the fast lane and then get, you know, overtaken. So um, there are unwritten rules. So we'll talk a little bit about lane etiquette, but just make sure that you're paying attention to all of the signage, especially in those municipal pools. They'll kind of provide a lot of guidance. So one of the things with lap pools or municipal pools is pool hygiene. So a lot of people are irritated or their eyes get irritated or they don't like the chemical smell of being in a um, chlorinated pool. But I mean, chlorine has a smell in itself, but what actually um, makes the, the smell worse is when you mix the chlorinated water with organic matter which organic matter basically is like body fluids, so sweat and urine. And so that's why they are, have all the signs that say rinse off. It's actually a CDC guide, guideline 
that you should rinse um, and take a shower for one minute to remove all of the organic matter because when you combine those two, it actually intensifies the smell and the eye irritation. So that's why the, that pre-swim shower is so important. Um, because, but, and ultimately, um, even with the chemicals and possibly some organic matter in the pool, the pool, a lap pool is going to be much cleaner than like if you decided to, to swim in a reservoir or a lake. And then the other area that you can swim is what we call open water. So that can be a river, a lake, a reservoir, an ocean. Um, and really open water is a completely different experience. There's, there's no confining lanes or chemicals. Um, it's kind of adventurous. It's um, great for those that are adrenaline junkies. Um, the water isn't clear, uh, so it's a lot of times not as necessarily relaxing as a lap pool would be. So when I learned to swim, I learned to swim in a lap pool, um, but I had to eventually get out into open water because my my race event that I had signed up for was going to be in a reservoir. And so um, it's a little bit of a learning curve trying to realize you cannot see anything um, and that there's a lot of people around you too, um, typically on those kinds of events. So it is a riskier choice. Um, you should never swim in open water by yourself. Um, especially if you have a history of like cardiovascular disease um, or uh, another condition, maybe you're triggered by cold like Raynaud's, um, you wouldn't want to swim on your own because you don't want to get stuck um, in the middle of a reservoir and then have problems and be all by yourself. Um, There's actually some additional benefits for open water swimming. And the reason this is, is typically most open water is going to be colder than the pool, the, than the water in the pool and in a lap pool. And what they found is that because when you get into colder water, it puts your body into that fight or flight mode and it reduces, a, I mean, it releases a lot of, um, of those hormones um, because your body feels like it's having to deal with this, this stress. And so this shock, it's, it's kind of like a vagus response is what they call it. So you get this chemical surge uh, where you get these euphoria kind of endorphins, you release dopamine and serotonin, um, adrenaline and cortisol. And really when you do that, it um, decreases inflammation. Your body's reaction to that is that it decreases inflammation, it improves your muscle strength because it thinks maybe you need to be running because there's a bear after you because you'd get that same fight or flight um, response and it boosts your mood. Um, so that's the benefits from this release. And because you don't necessarily get that from a lap pool, that's why you have these additional benefits for that open water swimming. And because you have that fight or flight response and you do it over and over, you actually um, teach your body to deal with um, stress. And so you'll have, you're more resistant and calm in the face of stressful life events. Uh, your immune system is uh, boosted because of those release of hormones. And you, the, the, the research also shows that it, that open water swimming will prevent and manage long-term health conditions. So it improves that your body um, and tries to, you know, help that damage. So it reduces the risk of cancer. It reduces the risk of neurologic disorders and chronic respiratory disease. Um, so there's a lot of good research that talks about the additional benefits of open water swimming over and above the regular benefits of swimming. Um, the biggest benefit is for those that are asthmatic and those that have type two diabetes. It just really um, helps manage those um, chronic diseases really, really well. If you do so need to do some um, open water swimming, it's important, um, you know, in the lap pool, a hat is not necessarily something that you absolutely need. 
Um, but if you do in open water swimming, you absolutely need a silicone hat that's very brightly cover colored so that other water watercraft can identify you. So bright orange or bright yellow, um, you really need that um, color so that you're easily visible. The other thing that you would need uh, for open water swimming is a wetsuit. And when I was learning to swim, I learned to swim in the pool and then I actually learned to swim added the wetsuit in the lap pool before I went to the open water swimming so I could kind of get used to it. The wetsuit will kind of help keep you warm um, because again, that water is a lot colder um, and it also actually makes you a little bit more buoyant. Um, so it's safer. Um, if you do buy a wetsuit, I recommend not buying a wetsuit online. Um, you can learn from my mistake on that. I. I uh, wanted to buy one online thinking that I was going to be smart and maybe get a little bit uh, cheaper um, price by by buying online. And I ended up buying three wetsuits before I was able to find one that actually fit. And it was just because I went off of their sizing guidelines and that, you know, the wetsuit gets here and it's way too big. And then I, you know, ordered the next size, you know, smaller and it still was too big. And then the next size smaller and it still was too big. So. Um, I actually just recommend just going to um, a local like bike bike shop. A lot of times we'll have um, wetsuits that you can buy um, and you can try them on so that you get a really great fit. Um, if you do uh, open water swimming, I recommend an anti-chafe stick. It's kind of like deodorant. Uh, you rub it in areas where maybe the wetsuit is rubbing against your skin so that you don't get those um, abrasions. Um, tinted goggles um, so that you can see a little better um, because of the sun. And it's really important to practice um, before you are involved in a race or event. Not only practice swimming, um, but also practicing swimming with others if you have an event. So um, I got a group of 20 people and we all went and did a, a rapid start together because when you're in an event, people will literally swim, you know, right over you. And so swimming, trying to mimic um, that as much as possible will help alleviate a lot of your anxiety and problems that will come up if you didn't practice that. All right, let's talk about um, some mechanics, how you do it. And so this is, these are kind of the five things that I talked about earlier that you should um, get on top of. But these are the the, the four swimming strokes. Um, we have your front crawler freestyle, that's the most common, um, breaststroke, butterfly, and backstroke. Um, because the front crawl and freestyle is um, the least, is easier on your body and the most common um, to get the technique, that's the one we're going to kind of focus on today. Um, but there are other strokes other than that, but those, that's the one we're going to, to focus on. So the first thing that you really need to get down when you're learning to, um, swim is your body position. And if you look at these pictures, um, truly your body should be horizontal on the water. So this picture of the lady in the black, um, you'll kind of see her hands right at the level of the water. Her head is down, um, her chest is down, her bottom's right at the level of the water, her legs are right at the level of the water. And really that's how you do. And what I see people, the mistakes that people make is that they don't put their head as far into the water as they should, or they don't push their chest down. And when you do that, your bum starts to go into the water and you're more at a 45 degree angle swimming like this versus swimming like this. So it's really important to push that forehead into the water. The level of the water on your head should really be right in the middle of your head. So your face should really be in the water completely. Um, you start peeking up and your bum's gonna go down and you're not going to be hydrodynamic. Um, so that is, the biggest thing, body position. And eventually you'll be horizontal like this and eventually you'll kind of rotate like this as you stroke, okay? Um, but 
getting that horizontal position is really important. So just practicing that body position is really important. Um, and so one of the ways that you can do that again um, is by literally putting yourself horizontal um, and just holding your breath and making sure and practicing that. And if your butt feels like it's falling down or you can ask your, your partner, am I horizontal or is my bum down? Um, I might have 45 degree angle. Am I at a 30 degree angle? Cause you shouldn't be, you should be straight across. You can use um, a, uh, you know, you can practice Superman arms and kick and practice going across um, the lane just with this you hold your breath and you just put your arms out and see if you can maintain that body position as you go back and forth and you just do that over and over and over and over again um, until you are really have that body position um, under control because again that water is 800 times denser than than um, air and so to be an effective swimmer you need to be that hydrodynamic and every bit of resistance whether that be a foot or a or your hips are going to be greatly multiplied. All right, leg action. So um, as I mentioned, you should be like flippers. The action should come from your hips, um, not from your knee. And so think that your um, feet are like flippers and that they're floppy. Um, and just like the, the other, you can, um, do Superman arms and get across the pool by kicking. You can practice on the side and you can also practice um, kicking um, using one of the boards, the float boards um, back and forth. Your arm action. Um, this is the hardest um, one to get under control. And so your arm action, really, you should lengthen your arm. Your elbow should be slightly bent. You reach forward with your thumb first and then when you grab into the water, your, your hand should be cupped and you should pretend like you've got like a ball in your hand and you're going to throw that ball towards the outside of your thigh. That's where your propulsion comes from. Um, your arms should be at 11 and 1. You don't want to cross like this across your body. Okay, so your arms should be straight. If you can kind of imagine that warm, one arm goes is wet and one arm is, is dry, um, and you always remember loose hands and that you're throwing that ball towards the out of, outside of your thigh, um, you're going to be in good shape. Um, and this is the hardest thing to get a hold of. Um, and so you may need to um, do a lot of practice. And like I mentioned, you can use those pool boys and put it in the middle of your thigh, and that will help kind of um, help you just focus on your arms. And then you have your breathing. Um, breathing is um, breathing out of your nose and in through your mouth. So as you're stroking, you go, mm, and that literally will push air out of your nose. And then when you come up to the side to breathe, if you do the pa, um, then that will help you remember to breathe out through your nose and in through your mouth. So, mm, pa, mm, pa. So if you use that technique or use those um, that kind of words, um, that will really help. Um, so I just saw something come up about a nose clips. Um, when I was first learning, I did use nose clips because I didn't have this mm pa up and running. Um, and but then it kind of teaches you not to breathe, you know, not to go out through your nose and in through your mouth. You're just breathing in and out of your mouth. So I don't necessarily recommend those. If you can't get the mm pa together, then you can use nose clips. Um, some people like the ear. Um, I never use the the um, ear plugs, um, but some for some people that bothers them. Um, and so you definitely can um, use those as well. When you're breathing, you don't lift your head. So you don't want to lift it up. You want to lift it to the side towards your shoulder and breathe on your body rotation and lots and lots of practice. If you need to practice breathing, you can practice breathing standing still and literally just breathing by itself using the mm pa and then add your arms still standing in place 
and then slowly you can put it all together. The other thing that you need to kind of get is the timing. Um, and 85% of the propulsion of swimming comes from your arms and 15% comes from your legs. And so, as I mentioned before, you want to try to get as far as possible. And so it's not necessarily swim, 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 swim. It's swim, swim, swim. Okay, so you almost wanna do it slower because you want your body to glide along that water rather than um, having that stroke rate so high because then your length is gonna go down. Um, you should kick one-on-one, -on -one, the same as your arms. And I recommend inhaling on three or five or a combination of the two, um, only because when you, uh, if you try to inhale um, on two or four on even, you'll always be breathing on the right same side. Um, so if you inhale, stroke, stroke, breathe, stroke, stroke, breathe, you can kind of see that I alternate the sides that I am breathing on. And that's really important in open water because if it's windy and the waves are crashing a certain way, you wanna have the ability to breathe on both sides. Maybe, there we go. <laughs> um, and then putting it all together, keep your body flat, reach with your arm, pull back as your body rolls side to side, turn your head towards your shoulder to breathe, and then put your face back into the water quickly and continue on with your stroking. I mentioned some of the mistakes um, that I see, that body position, don't look forward. We're always looking down, keep your forehead down. Um, and if you, when you need your, to breathe, you turn to the side, you turn to the side, you don't breathe up um, in front of you or your bum's gonna go down. Um, leg action, don't do it from the knees, do it from the hip. Um, arm action, you shouldn't be crossing over, keep those 11 and one positions. Um, don't hold your breath. Always either be breathing out or breathing in using that mm, pa technique and always have a plan. I always still do swimming drills to try to improve my technique, um, no, even though I've been swimming for years and years. So we're kind of running a little bit out of time, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these swimming drills. Um, but there are things that you can do to improve. And I've already mentioned several of them, um, the body position. Um, if you are having, if someone says you are not horizontal, you need to work on body position. And so doing that chest lean, doing those Superman arms will help um, with your body position. Leg action, if you're having a hard time figuring out leg action, you can do what's called vertical kicking. Um, but um, vertical kicking is basically going in the deep pool with the flippers and kicking that way. It helps, it helps you kind of um, build strength in your legs. Um, arm action, um, doing it standing by itself, um, trying just one arm instead of arm, arm, arm. If you do just swim, swim, and you're just practicing one arm um, and then putting it together, start with breathing. Then try to put breathing and kicking together. Then try and put breathing and stroke together. Um, and so it's a step-by-step, -step, little baby steps at a time. All right, pool etiquette. Um, swimming is like um, driving. You travel to the right of the center line. Uh, many times you may have to share a lane with someone and we do what's called circle swim, which means we stay to the right of the lane. When we get towards the end, there's a T on the ground and you just kind of hug the center and turn. Um, if someone's behind you, they may tap your toe so that they can pass you. If that happens, you just move to the right and let them pass. And the same is true of, of you. You can tap someone um, to get ahead of them if you're swimming a little bit faster. Some other uh, etiquette things is joining a lane. Um, just make sure that you check and let the swimmers know that you're joining. And you always wanna join at the end rather than in the middle. Uh, you want five seconds between swimmers. Um, and if you have to stop, just make sure you kind of hug onto the wall and slide into the corner. Don't block people from swimming. All right, some tips and resources. Um, I don't recommend necessarily going on on your own. Um, having someone give you some advice on your technique is awesome. 
Um, I definitely would consider adult lessons and probably um, reaching out to the, your mun municipal pool near you is a good way to have um, adult lessons. But actually what I think is one of the best ways is joining what's called a master swim program. Now, a master swim program sounds really intimidating, but it really is not for people who are awesome at swimming. It's all levels. Uh, the great thing about master swims is if you join a club, then they set you you go at set times there's already people there there's already a coach there they help you with your technique they already have drills so it, it, it makes it really easy and they give you the motivation all you have to do is just show up and um i think on the next slide i'll i'll there's there's some information on how you can find a master swim program in your area um and really Watching those technique videos, getting feedback on your technique is the only way that you're going to know. And so doing it independently is really hard. So here's some resources um, that United States Master Swimming here in the center is what I was mentioning. It's got a club finder so that you can find a club um, that really, if you join, you're going to get that motivation. You're going to get those organized workouts. You're going to get that, that coach who can give you some feedback. Um, My Swim Pro is an app that has some like training programs. There's a book and a Facebook community. And then Swim Teach is a website that has a lot of like how-to videos and information and a book on the complete beginner's guide to swimming. And there's my references, and I am happy to take questions. While participants are inputting their questions, thank you so much, Laura, for all of this fabulous information. And as county employees, you can get a supplemental um, county card, and you can have access to all the county rec centers, and they also have pools for you to start swimming. What kind of questions do we have? I would just like to make a comment, Laura, that I had no idea there was that much stuff associated with swimming. And I personally have been afraid of open water swimming. So I was fascinated with the benefits of that. And I, I'm always thinking that people who do that must be very brave. <laughs> it almost made me want to go out and start doing that. If it wasn't for the cold water, I probably would be out there and start doing it. Um, thank you for, for letting us know about that. I had absolutely no clue that that yeah. was better than pool swimming. Yeah, it's scarier, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, it definitely has more benefits. And, and that's kind of if you're going to be involved in races, um, triathlons or things like that, that's how it's going to happen. Most of the time they they don't do an indoor triathlon. They're going to do, um, all of that outdoor. And so you've got to learn kind of how to sight and how to swim in the, that open water. Looks like some of the questions I'm seeing, I'm not sure about you, Sadie, but, um, you already gave the one about resources for adult swimming classes and also. Um, Sadie already gave information about county pools that they can go to. Oh, somebody says, thank you. I find swimming so hard, but I think I must breathe wrong. So I'm going to practice the MPA breathing. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's one of the things that I struggled with. And so, like I mentioned, practice just breathing by itself. If that's your barrier, then start with the breathing, standing it in place. Put your face in the water and practice that mm pa over and over and over again. That's when you when you feel like you've got that under control, add the arms so that you get the, the technique of breathing with the arms. And then um, you can then use maybe the pool boy to hold your body in position as you do the arms and the breathing. So you can kind of see it's a step by step process and you have to kind of assess where is your problems. Um, but the other thing I would recommend is don't try to go too fast. Think slow. Every time you stroke, think I'm trying to get further. I'm not trying to get faster. I'm trying to get further. And actually you'll get faster by going further. Yeah, thank you for that reminder. That, I, I really thought that was important information earlier. Sadie, do you have any comments? 
I believe, I don't know if we skipped this one that was mentioned earlier. It said, how often do you need to swim to get the fabulous benefits that you mentioned at the beginning? So it's, it's three times a week, 30 minutes. Perfect. I think my biggest issue besides being out in the cold water is actually trusting my face in the water for that long. Um, that's if you have any recommendations on how to become more comfortable with keeping your face in the water for longer periods of time. So um, I think that that, you know, start with your body position and, you know, use the Superman arms and kick across one one side and then kick across on the other. Um, and some people will need to breathe a little bit more than others. So even if you need, if you're still having trouble with that, you can go back to what I was mentioning, doing the mm pa while you literally put your face in the water and do that until you feel comfortable. Cause you can do that for longer and longer. You can do the mm pa, mm pa. So you can see, you don't have to do one second, one second, one second, but the longer that you hold that mm and you're breathing out, then that's going to mimic how swimming will be. I had a technique that I got comfortable with that every five strokes, I would take a breath. And then the next one, I would take three strokes and take a breath. And then I would take five strokes and take a breath. And it's, it's really just trial and error on what's going to work best for you. That's really interesting. Thank you. Sadie, wonder, anything else you'd like to add or Andrea? I was thinking too, to maybe make people more comfortable is what if you started in a water aerobics class or some sort of water Zumba, just to get used to being in the water, having water in your face, and then maybe after class doing a couple laps just to see and kind of ease yourself into it. Yeah, there's there's a, there's many people that have that fear of not being able to breathe or whatever with the water. Um, and so um, I, I know that you can actually go online and, you know, Google something like fear of water. And there are videos that can help you kind of overcome that fear of putting your face in water. Um, and it's like step by step, do this first, do this next, because you've got to almost like psych yourself up that you're capable of, of holding your breath and that there is no fear behind it um, because you can do it. So that's what I would re recommend if you kind of have that fear of water is Googling that fear of water and, and watch some of the videos, they are out there. Okay, so we just have a comment. As a 50-year-old non-swimmer, I will have to work on my bravery. I agree with that one. Um, it is almost 1 o'clock. So, Sadie, is there anything you want to tell your employees before we go? The last thing would be to sign in if you haven't already for points. It's located in the chat box. And thank you so much for being here today and teaching us all about swimming. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.